Hey guys, welcome back to the shop where we go over tips and tricks and frequently asked questions to make sure that you get the most out of your Redline bow hunting gear. My name is Wes Brown, field producer and resident bow technician for Redline bow hunting. And today we're gonna to be talking about access point specifics. Now in a previous video, I went over access point adjustments where we talked about how to level one of our sites perfectly with your bow. Now I oversimplified a lot of things in that video to make sure that the way I conveyed my knowledge to you, you could follow along very easily without losing track. But today we're gonna to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, we've had a few comments asking us to explain the different access points on our particular lineup of sites and how those access points affect your shot, whether it be a long shot or uphill, downhill, whatever have you. So that's what we're gonna dig into a little bit today. Now, when we talk about access points and how to find that knowledge, whether it be online or books or any type of literature, sometimes it could be left up for interpretation. And when I did my research years ago and even before creating this video, it's still left up for interpretation on how you perceive the different access points a movable site will have. So with that said, what I'm gonna say in this video is not gospel. Do not take this to your local pro shop and say, well, Wes from the shop said it was this way, so that's the way it is. Because in all reality, I'm just trying to give you some tools for your toolbox that you can carry with you so you have a little bit more in-depth knowledge of our lineup of sites and the access points we offer. So with that said, let's dig into the different access points we're gonna talk about today. Now, the first one that I wanna talk about is the first access point, which in reality isn't always the most important access point, but we do offer it in some of our sites, and I suggest if it is there, use it because it will further customize your site to your bow setup. Now, I'm gonna grab a site housing with just a windage bracket on it right here. And what I'm gonna show you is how the first axis point adjustment affects your site. Now, I'm gonna hold this site just like this, and I want you to imagine a straight line going straight through the pins right out the other side. And let's imagine it is perfectly level with the ground, and we want it to be level with our bow. Now let's say we put a level up to it as it's mounted on our bow like this, and let's say it's off. Now we have to adjust that. Now there's no other way to adjust uh, the first access point anywhere else on the site, but right by the housing. And the way we're going to do that is there is usually just a pivot on that housing when it is attached to the windage bracket. And to adjust it, we want to make sure that the site is perfectly level with the ground just like that. So that first axis point drawing a line straight through the site itself is going to affect the angle of the site housing, okay? Now when I say it's not really that important, now if you have a multiple pin site, it is very important because if that site is canted the wrong way or is not perfectly level with your bow, it's going to affect that 30, 40, 50, or 60, however many pins you have uh, because it's going to adjust uh, that pin gap within your housing. So it's not gonna allow you to be accurate at longer distances. But single pins, it's usually not that important. What we wanna level it for is to make sure that you can see straight through that scope without seeing any top wall or bottom wall uh, when you're looking through the scope because you want to have your sight picture as clear as possible and only see the ring that is on the outside facing you of that sight. And we want you to see those pins and we want you just a nice clear tube straight to your target. The next access point I want to talk about is the second access point, which is arguably the most important access point when you're talking about different types of axes. Taking this same example before we get into our lineup, taking this site and looking directly into it, we're going to imagine that there is a line going straight down the top of the site housing and straight out the bottom, lined up perfectly with your pins. Now, when we have that straight line, how we're going to affect that is by the second axis point. And the reason why we want to adjust that second axis point is because one, we have a level with a bubble in it there, and we want that bubble to be perfectly in the middle of your site housing so that it is perfectly lined up with your bow. Because if this second axis point is not adjusted properly, you're going to end up having farther left or right shot groups the further you start moving back. And the reason being is because if this is canted to the right or to the left, you can notice with these three pins here that they become unaligned. And in a movable site, as I adjust that site down for a farther distance, it starts creating an angle 
with that site housing. So that site housing is no longer in the same position as far as vertically as it was when it was, let's say, at 20 yards. And it's the same for a single pin as well. The farther you start going down, it starts angling to the right or angling to the left the further you go down. And that's why possibly you are having shot groups way left or way right the further you move back. Now, there are other aspects of shooting that come into play when we start talking about missing left and right the further we start moving back in distance because our form and the way our center shot on our bow is set up could be wrong. But assuming that all of those are right, uh, the way to fix that is going to be at your second axis point. Now, the third axis point is arguably probably just as important as the second axis point. And what that third axis point does is it takes the entire site housing inwards and outwards, kind of like a door hinge. So if this is your site right here, my hand is the site, and I, I want to adjust my third axis point, it's going to move it away from me like this, like a door hinge, or it can move it towards me. Now, a lot of people will say to adjust the third axis point properly, and I'm not going to argue with them, is to do it at full draw. Now, I won't lie to you guys. One, I'm not a, a championship archer. I'm the hunter, and I do a lot of 3D shoots and indoor shoots, and I've never adjusted my third axis point at full draw. Now, they say that the third axis point is going to affect your shot when you are shooting uphill and downhill out of a tree stand or out of a tree saddle, uh, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, I just level it with my bow at, while I have it on my vise, like you see right behind me here, I level it on my bow that you can watch in an earlier video. I level it and I've never had that issue. I've shot at 45 uh, degrees, I mean almost straight up sometimes, and I've never had a left or right issue. I just level my bubble within my housing and because I set it up the way I showed you guys in the earlier video, I've never had a problem. So. Honestly, uh, if you can and have that capability through your pro shop or yourself, by all means do it. I'm sure it's not going to hurt, but um, I've just never done it. So if you guys have like the true science behind that, uh, by all means shoot us an email. I'd love to read it. And uh, I mean, I've read a lot of stuff about it. I've just never had to do it. So it's still very important to make sure that it is perfectly level with your bow. And just a, a side note, guys, a lot of people think that that third axis point can be adjusted to help with torque on the bow, but I promise you that is not the case. A lot of people think, well, I'm torquing it to the left, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring my third axis point out so I can see straight through my sight, um, but it's not gonna affect really the shot as you keep moving backwards because if your form is wrong and your bow's not set up properly, you're just not gonna have the most accuracy possible that your equipment can offer. So now that we've gone through all of our axis points uh, that we're going to be talking about today, let's go through our red line bow hunting lineup of sites and the ones that have the axis points and which site has which axis point adjustment on them. So the first one we're going to go over is the RL3 dovetail. And I'm just using the dovetail for the RL3 because the RL3 bracket has the same axis point adjustment on it uh, in the same position and everything. So I'm just going to use the RL3 dovetail for an example. And you can notice you have your, your bracket that goes to your bow, and then you have your dovetail here going into your windage bracket and knob. And you're going to notice that you're going to have two screws, top and bottom, right here. And you're also going to notice you have your five reference lines with your single line that's attached to the rest of the housing. And you loosen those, and that's how you're going to adjust your second axis point. So the only axis point on the RL3 dovetail and bracket is going to be your second axis point, which again is the most important. The next site we'll go over is the RL2 bracket mounted site. And this one here has all three axis point adjustments and I'll show you where they're at right here. So your second axis point is going to be right where your bracket meets your elevation knob and bracket. And you'll notice you have a top and bottom screw. You just loosen those and you'll be able to adjust your second axis point. You also notice you have your reference lines up top. And then your next axis point that you'll see moving further down the site is your third axis point, which is right here by your toolless windage knob. And you'll notice you'll have two screws, one here and one here, and you'll be able to adjust that third axis point. About an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch of adjustment there. And then you'll notice that we also have the first axis point adjustment right here along with your reference lines so that you can go ahead and take your first axis point of your housing uh, to line it up perfectly so you have the best 
sight picture when you're shooting out in the field. Now, moving to the RL2 dovetail, uh, this one comes with your third and second axis, and we've included a option for the first axis point as well that I've done a video on how to install that in a previous, uh, in a previous video. Yeah, we've done the video in a previous video. But anyway, uh, so anyway, you guys can see here we have, we have the bracket that goes onto your bow, and then you see your dovetail. And you'll notice that you have two set screws here and two set screws here along with another screw up top. And when you loosen all of these screws, you're going to be able to adjust your third axis point. So it brings the entire sight housing in and out like that door hinge I talked about earlier. And you'll notice that you'll have an arrow with reference lines as well. Now moving upwards here, you're gonna find your second axis point right here in pretty much the normal spot that we've had them on most all of our sites um, is going to be your top and bottom screws and your reference lines with arrows, and then you'll be able to adjust your second axis point there. And then, like I said, this you have an option to install your first axis point. This site here has it installed, and you'll notice that you have a screw here, and it is attached to the rest of the housing. You just loosen that screw, and you're able to adjust that first axis point very, very easily. The last site we're gonna go over is the RL1. And this one here comes with the third and second axis points. So you'll notice that here on the RL1, uh, this is the three pin, it's the same for the single pin as well, is the RL1 is going to have your bracket into your third axis point. So the same as the RL2 dovetail, you're gonna have your two set screws on this side, two set screws on this side with your top screw there. And that again is going to make it hinge inwards and outwards uh, for those elevated shots. And then you're gonna notice our second axis point is gonna be your two screws top and bottom up here by the housing. And you're also, for both axis points, notice that we have those reference lines for you as well. And that's it, guys. As far as what you've seen here, these are the sites that we have in our lineup that have axis point adjustments. And if you have any more questions or any other concerns, please drop a comment or shoot us an email. I really appreciate you guys watching today. Hopefully we helped you out, and we'll see you next time.